Hello and welcome everybody finally to a new video. Some of my subscribers may already have noticed the reason why, why there was such a long time no new video and that's because I've moved. I'm now at my first own place. I'm doing a master course in IT and media and yeah this is my new room but uh, everything else is still the same so yeah. So in this video I have another old piece of tech. It's relatively old. It's from 2005, so 11 years, years old. And it's one of these little guys. It's an iPod 5th um, generation classic, or as it was called back then, an iPod video. So this one is the 30 gigabyte model, as you can see on the back maybe. I'll show it to you in all of its glory <laughs> back on the desk. But uh, yeah, I purchased it on eBay for about 45 bucks. It spent most of its time in a car and was docked to the car, so it's in pretty good condition. The battery is not that great anymore, but uh, we can deal with that later. Yeah, so this is the device. I wanted one of these for a long time. I, I always liked them when I was uh, a kid and they were always too expensive for me to buy. I had only these uh, MP3 player sticks. Um, the cheap ones and yeah, but finally I could fulfill the dream and buy one of these uh, used. I already used it a little bit and uh, I like it a lot. Especially as the music app on iOS gets worse and worse with each version in my opinion. Because it's all trimmed for Apple Music but I like to buy CDs and have my, my own library on the, on the iPhone and yeah, the experience is not very good for that anymore. Well, and the iPods, they are made for music, for your own collection, and, and it just uh, works perfect for that. So, but I want to have more than 30 gigabytes. I already thought two or three years ago, when I buy my next phone, I want at least 64 gigabytes for the music. But, uh, well, now I have an iPod, and with these, it's very easy to upgrade the hard disk. So this one has a 30 gigabyte hard disk, as I said, but um, I have ordered something which is very, very cool. And it's, and it's an adapter which connects to the connector where the hard drive is plugged in. And then you can put SD cards in the, your iPod and replace the hard drive. And I have for the start, uh, I have a 128 gigabyte SD card. This adapter can hold up to two SD cards. Yeah, the capacity you can even put 256 or even 512 gigabyte SD cards in here. And the iPod will recognize everything and will, will be able to play music back from there. There are some limitations, but I will talk about those later. All we have to do is open the iPod, replace the hard disk with this stuff. I also have a new battery which is coming tomorrow. Um, I don't know if I put it in, in this video, but it's a simple replace. So yeah, let's get started. So here you can see all of the parts again. The iPod uh, is in pretty good condition, especially, especially at the front. Um, there are no scratches on the screen or something. I also have a screen protector on there. And uh, on the back you can see some scratches or a lot of scratches, but that doesn't bother me because first I have a case which is magnetic. Also, for me, the iPod has to have scratches. It's just every iPod has scratches and it's a part of them, so <laughs> I don't care about that too much. With the iPod, I got the original case which came with the iPod if you, purchase, if you purchased it back then. And yeah, it fits pretty tightly in there. Seems like it has never been used. It's also very, di very dirty and not nice to look at. But yeah, also the original headphones, the old school ones, and the original charging and sync ca cable, which has these little buttons on the side, so it really clicks in there. And if you want to remove the cable again, you have to press those buttons. That's really cool, I think. So yeah, that's what came with the iPod. And then I purchased this adapter. Now there are many, many type, different types of these adapters. 
uh, you can find on eBay a lot of hard disk to uh, compact flash adapters and they are a lot cheaper than those but then you need a compact, a compact flash to SD card adapter and it's not it's not the nicest solution and these sell for about 30 or 35 bucks I believe uh, it's a company called iFlash and yeah they, they do single SD card adapters they do dual and also quad micro SD card adapters and um, they seem like a pretty cool company and most of the people in the in the web speak very highly of them and the, the adapters so yeah they, they seem like good guys and like they produ produce a quality product so I went with them. Then we have the opening tools, these are special, these are made of a very soft plastic so it doesn't uh, hurt the plastic from the iPod yeah, and then I just got the cheapest SD card I could find, which was a micro SD card adapter. iFlash has also a list of uh, SD cards which are, which are known to work with the adapter. I think this one or the 64 gigabyte one was on the list, so I just went with these uh, with this SD card. So I think we should be fine, and I think we can start opening the iPod. Okay, so first let's power down the iPod. Then we have to switch the hold switch to hold and now we can take one of these tools and uh, let's try to open it. So it's probably not super easy to open it but uh, with a little bit of time and slowly trying I think we should be able to get it open. It's finally open. Well, that took a long time. I don't know why it's turning on. When I open it... Yeah. So, there are two cables connected. One of them is the battery and the other one is the hard drive or something else I believe. Okay, now there's this little tiny connector which we need to lift on both sides to disconnect the battery. It's difficult to show because the cable is not very long and it's difficult to get in there. So the battery is disconnected, so now we can lift up the hard drive, like this, and here we can find the connector for the second cable. There's a little latch which we have to open, and then it's disconnected. I believe this is the audio check now, yeah, seems like it. Okay, now we can open this latch and disconnect the hard drive. Cool. So let's put this aside. And now this has to go in place of here. I have to check in which orientation I have to install it. But uh, we can install the SD card first. So we need scissors. Now the opening was really not uh, fun and the tools are all now broken. So as you can see it's really difficult to open. You have to be very careful to not destroy anything. And uh, yeah, it works, but it's it's not a lot of fun. Yeah, and actually, um, the limit for the songs you can put on uh, the SD cards for this adapter is uh, defined by the memory of the iPod, the RAM. So this one has 32 megabytes of RAM. The limit should be about 15,000 songs, I believe, or 20,000. 
20,000, I believe. And that's because um, there's a database stored in the memory which contains all the mp3 tags and all the information about your songs like titles, albums and stuff like that, play counter. And if you have too much songs, then the, this database is too big for the memory and the, the iPod will not start again. So you have, to re you have to sync again and put less songs on it. So I have about 5800 songs now, so I should be fine for, for a little while. If you get the 60 gigabyte model or the 80 gigabyte model, which came later, um, the iPod is thicker, but you get double the RAM, you get 64 megabytes of RAM. So you can put quite a lot of uh, more songs on there. Oh, I have packages like these. Also, I have a lot of songs uh, in Apple Lossless. So if I, get, if I buy a CD, I rip them in Apple Lossless, so I have uh, CD quality. I'm pretty sure I won't notice any difference to a good quality AAC or MP3, but uh, well, if I have the space, I can also put Apple Lossless on here, so why not? All right, finally. So let's put the SD card in here, put it in the adapter in slot 1. Make sure uh, the thing is not on read only, but well, that's okay. Put it in. Nice. So let's confirm. It should go in this way. Then we connect the adapter. The iPod will be now a lot lighter than before and also the battery life should be better because the hard drive um, obviously uses more um, energy than a little SD card. So this adapter is also designed to be more power efficient. At least they claim it on their website. So I'm pretty sure this, I, I bought the right product here not a cheap one from eBay. So let's put the little ribbon cable back in here. Seems to be good. So, and now there's a little foam pad which we can put on here so it doesn't touch anything and doesn't wiggle around. This is also, this did also come with the adapter, so that's really nice. I think I put the second one also up here somewhere. So it should be nice and secure. Okay, now let's put the cables back in and see what it does. No, okay, it goes in nicely. Okay, let's turn it over. Oh, it's a lot lighter. <laughs> a lot. And let's see whether it boots. Maybe I connected the battery nut. Right. Okay, let's connect it to the computer and see if that helps. Plugging it in. Oh, and it's booting. Cool. Let's see what iTunes displays. Ah, oh, nice. So we get the set icon, the set iPod icon, I'm sorry. That's a good sign. Please wait, very low battery. Okay. I definitely have to replace the battery. So let's wait just a second while the iPod does its thing and then I will record iTunes and show you uh, what we have to do in iTunes to get this working. So guys, I've reconnected the hard disk because my battery seems to be <coughs> almost or completely empty the iPod wasn't able to go to the restore iPod screen and would always 
change back to the low battery sign, then would quickly go back to the set I, uh, iPod icon and switch back and so forth. So I'm first going to charge the iPod for a little while and then I'm going to try again to put the adapter back in. Just a quick little side note, uh, the iPod is now syncing because I connected it and uh, you can hear the hard drive clicking which is just, just really cute, <laughs> this tiny little hard drive, maybe you can hear it. So the battery is now three quarters charged, that should be enough and I put the adapter back in. I also think I didn't put the connector deep enough in the last time, so let's see what happens if I connect it now. So it's connected. Apple logo, set iPod, nothing popping up in iTunes and there's the very low battery again. Oh, now let's see what happens if we try to get it into DFU mode. <laughs> Nothing happens. Let's try a USB port directly on the computer. I may have fixed the problem. Uh, I formatted the SD card as FAT and not as um, X, X FAT, which it was uh, coming with. It seems like this is sometimes causing problems. And uh, yeah, well, let's see whether it worked or not. I hope it does work. Same as before. Nothing on iTunes. Just my phone. Very low battery again. Ooh, do, do, do. Okay. So since the partitioning in disk utility on the Mac did not work, I'm trying the official procedure for Windows um, in a VN, which is on under the iFlash homepage. So hopefully this uh, will work then. So I really want to get this working now and I hope that it does work with the SD card I purchased. So yeah. So I'm now going to rebuild the master boot record and delete the partitions, create the partitions and everything like that. Oh guys, can you tell the difference? Uh, this thing is now the other way around inside here. I think I was a real dumbass and, and put it in the wrong way, so uh, yeah. Let's plug in the battery and see what it does now. Well, hey, look at this. Connect to your computer, use iTunes to restore. Yes, baby! <laughs> oh man, such a stupid mistake. Spent half an hour or more on this stupid mistake. So let's connect it. So it's connected. It says do not kiss disconnect. Nice. And now iTunes has detected an iPod in recovery mode. You must restore this iPod before it can be used with iTunes. Okay. Let's hit restore iPod. Oh yes, I want to restore it. Next, agree. Dum -dum 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 -dum. Oh, okay. Password. Restoring iPod. Whoa. Okay, this can probably take a while. Let's see. Look at this cool black and white charging symbol looks different than normal. Finally, after endless tries. Welcome to your new iPod. Um, I had a lot of errors um, when trying to restore it. I even tried it on a PowerBook and it didn't work. And after restart of the computer and everything, it finally could restore the iPod. So let's hit continue.
let's go to music sync entire music library and as you can see I still have 38 gigabytes free nice so this will take a little while well have a look at this everybody um, it's the next day the sync completed uh, after about three or four hours and now I have all my music on here so let's go to settings um, out and here we can see capacity 119 gigabytes and I still have about 40 gigabytes left and as you can see I also have videos on here so these are music videos and let's have a look let's take Coldplay the first one and we can watch videos on the iPod video of course <laughs> this is the resolution every, everything is pretty bad but it still is very cool I think yeah so that's nice and yeah it feels a lot snappier especially when I'm scrolling through my artists and everything it's too oh, it's difficult while filming and what's also faster if I select an artist and uh, select the song um, the, it starts playing faster than with the hard disk which is very nice so the album cover loads faster and uh, yeah so it feels pretty pretty good pretty fast it's working and yeah so that's great but there's one thing left to do and look what has arrived today a little package so let's open it so in here we find opening tools we don't need them anymore uh, the iPod is still open and uh, a replacement battery so this was about five bucks on eBay um, the brand is Mtech. it was uh, shipped from Germany so let's see how well the battery works and uh, let's put it in so first let's power down the iPod okay and I pop you back on the tripod so I have both of my hands free so let's go ahead and uh, I have to grab my little tool here disconnect the old battery okay and uh, now I first have to look how to replace this Okay, so the battery is just held down by adhesive, so we have to carefully get it out here. Especially be careful of the connectors. <laughs> So that's out. Maybe I shouldn't use this battery now anymore, it looks a bit damaged here. But we have a new one anyway, so I have to take this open. Today I was at IKEA and bought some uh, bought some scissors so I don't have to use my my little ones on here anymore. <laughs> Here's the battery. This seems to be the original battery. And uh, yeah. Oh, it has some adhesive on the back. Okay. So we can replace it exactly the same way. is like that okay 
seems about right. Good. There's already a little help here for folding the little ribbon cable. So let's put it back in, close it, and have a look whether there's any juice. Doesn't seem like it. So let's connect the power cable. Very low battery, please wait. I hope the, batter the replacement battery is not too bad. Normally it's not very good if they ship with such a low charge because this can damage the battery. But the old one wasn't good enough anymore. It maybe played for three or four hours music and not more. So that's not the original 12 or what it should play, how long it should last. So I gave the battery its first full charge and uh, seems all right. I have to set the time again, but otherwise everything seems to be working. So I think it's time to close it again. So let's put it to sleep. Check whether everything is sitting fine. Seems like it. Put it on hold. And I guess just push everything back in place. Oh, there's a piece missing here. But now it should close. So it won't close on this side. So I have to have a look. Seems like this is pushing against the, the board is pushing against the battery. So let's take those pieces out. And let's try again. Nice. So let's unlock it, put it back up. And there it is. Finished iPod. Oh, it's so booting. <laughs> oh shit, guys. I think when closing it, I broke the screen a little bit. Oh man. Well, for now I can live with that, but it's not nice. Yeah, I think I will leave it there. Maybe I buy a replacement screen someday, but for now I will have to live with it. But otherwise, here's the finished, here's the finished iPod. It's noticeably lighter, it has a lot more storage and uh, yeah, can't wait to test the battery life and to listen to music in this lovely piece again. So let's put it back into its case. Alright, that's what it looks like. So. Thank you very much for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I will enjoy listening to the iPod. And uh, well, yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.